So I thought when I'd be talking about the week 52 sales, aka the final week of sales in Japan, which this is supposed to be the massive week, we'd be talking about the Nintendo Switch and how much it's dominating. And of course, it is dominating, and we're going to talk about that. But that's not actually the shocking part because it was expected. No, the Switch did not cross six million in sales. Like some hoped, it needed to sell about two hundred or three hundred twenty-one thousand units, and it only sold two hundred seventy-eight thousand. Oh no, poor Nintendo. <laughs> but uh, we'll get into those sales in a little bit because actually something else extremely shocking is happening in Japan. Uh, I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe it, but before I can get into talking about that, i got to remind you, we have a huge giveaway going on this month. You can win a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X, or a Nintendo Switch. There's details on how to enter down in the description. Winner will be announced during a live stream at the end of the month. Also, if we somehow, miracles do happen, and we hit 70,000 subscribers this month, we'll give away two systems, not just one. So, yeah, let's make that happen. All right, so speaking of PlayStation 5, I know we're giving one away. I know it's like impossible to get, but uh, PlayStation 5 is tanking in Japan. So, yes, the Nintendo Switch is still dominating. Sales boost over uh, last week, you know, it was only about 15,000 units. Uh, they were going back to lotteries again. The Switch sold out, all that jazz. Okay, fine. 278,000 units. They ended the full year of 2020 at 5,957,000 units sold. Uh, that's nearly a 2 million increase, or I guess closer to 1.5 million increase over the prior year, where the Switch sold in 2019, 4,493,000 units. Now, it's over 17 million uh, in Japan, but this is where things are... Uh, Really, really interesting. So, yeah, it's like 8 million units or so ahead of the PlayStation 4. Obviously, you know, next target up is, you know, another 7 million or so, 8 million or so to try to pass 3DS. But here's the thing. PlayStation 5 has been in Japan now for a number of weeks, and it only sold 13,000 units last week. Now, to put this in perspective, the PlayStation 4 sold 12,600 it only outsold the PlayStation 4 during the highest sales week in Japan by 400 units. Now, I really, I couldn't believe this chart, so I did some digging to make sure. The PlayStation 5 is currently being dominated by the launch of the Wii U. So, not only did the Wii U launch at a higher number of units during its first week, we are now seven weeks into sales for PlayStation 5, and it's barely creeping up towards 300,000 units. The Wii U, in the same seven-week period, was over 700,000 units sold in Japan. Guys, in Japan, I'm not talking worldwide. We all know Wii U is a flop worldwide. In Japan, Wii U was apparently more popular than the PlayStation 5. Now, there has been talks about this going on for a little while now because the launch numbers for PlayStation 5 already were not that impressive. And people were wondering what the hell is going on. This is the home country for Sony. Uh, Sony has traditionally done really, really well. I mean, yeah, we're not expecting it to you know, do Switch numbers at this point, but the PlayStation 4, you know, is almost at 10 million sales. So, like, it's not... You no, know, Sony's basically owned the home console market in Japan for so long, and you could try to chalk up Switch success at, oh, it's also portable. So, okay, if you want to dismiss Switch, that's fine, but how do you dismiss the fact that the PlayStation 5 can't even keep pace with the failed-to-launch only sold 13 million units worldwide Wii U. This is concerning. Now, obviously, uh, there's shortages for PlayStation 5 worldwide. And Sony is specifically, you know, bringing units to certain areas over others. Uh, that's just how it goes. When you have supply shortages, you got to prioritize what countries get what units. And clearly, they're not prioritizing Japan, which is strange for a, play, uh, you know, a company located in Japan. But actually... Sony made some changes over the last, you know, few years. Number one, their worldwide headquarters are no longer in Japan. They actually moved them to California. And we have not seen any negative impact of this for Japanese gamers until basically now. 
where you could tell Sony is no longer prioritizing Japan as a major sales territory. The 13,000 they sold last week of PlayStation 5 was every single unit of PlayStation 5 they sent to the J Japan. So we don't even really know what the demand is for PlayStation 5 because they're not even coming close to sending enough units to Japan to find out. So, yeah, the Wii U crushed, absolutely crushed the PlayStation 5 in its first two months on the market, but also, like, Nintendo was actually providing units to buy, whereas Sony, they're practically abandoning Japan. And this is very, very strange for a country that is still deeply rooted in Japan, despite the worldwide headquarters being moved over to the United States. So... I'm, you know, if you're in Japan and you've been a Sony gamer for a long time, one, I feel sorry. Um, I, I did not expect Sony to truly uh, give Japan kind of like the, I don't want to say third world treatment, but definitely uh, not treating it as an upper echelon sales territory anymore. I mean, 10 million units. I get that the PlayStation 4, you know, has sold, what is it, uh, you know, 100 million plus units or whatever. I get that. But think about that. One-tenth of the sales were in Japan. One-tenth. That's not something to laugh at. Maybe that's not the 30, 40 million that happens like in the United States, but still, that is nothing to scoff at. That is still makes Japan a top 10 country for Sony sales, but not now. Now you're starting to see Germany. You're starting to see Poland, France, other countries selling more units because they're getting more units than Japan. Japan's ranking in terms of where Sony is providing units to and prioritizing is somewhere down in the 20s and 30s. Like, it's insane to think that the home country of Sony is just kind of being abandoned. Now, some of this is probably because, hey, everyone is in China now. China is potentially the largest market in the world. Whoever can blow up and become successful there could easily have the first 200, 300 million console ever. I mean, this is, there's a reason that, you know, you can hate Tencent and all that, but Nintendo, of course, partnered with Tencent because if they can get, you know, massive penetration with Switch, which they're actually making some ground there in China, I mean, you could look at next year as, you know, we looked at, oh man, Nintendo Switch has his best year ever. Well, if you include China sales in 2021, I mean, holy crap. Switch could end up at 40, 50 million sales in a single year if they penetrate correctly. So you can understand why, okay, there's maybe a, more of a focus on this new market now that the restrictions are gone and China's allowing the sales of video game consoles across the whole country, not just in Hong Kong through some interesting means or back when, you know, the, the, this, this system ban was in place in China for a long time where they wouldn't let video game consoles come in. So you had like these IQ players that were like technically made by Nintendo, but um weren't official quote-unquote official and it was very strange how companies got into china in the past but now you can release a switch a playstation 5 an xbox series x or s like you can release that straight up in in china now uh you, you probably have to partner with someone like tencent who owns a huge chunk of the video game market there uh china doesn't have a laws like like prevent monopolies and all that so you kind of gotta uh go with you know <laughs> I guess, uh, an evil company to, if you, if you really want to make some progress in there. And I'm not trying to argue that everything Tencent does is bad. I'm sure they do some good somewhere. I don't know. Um, every company does some good somewhere, but I just, you know, uh, most billion dollar corporations have quite a lot of, uh, bad stuff happening. And this includes Nintendo, by the way, and Sony, uh, the, our favorite companies, just because they make products we like, you know, Apple, doesn't mean uh, that these companies are free from um, criticism and free from uh, doing some really shady stuff because everyone, especially in tech, is extremely involved in shady practices. Uh, we got, we've heard about some slave labor possibly happening in China. Obviously, there's the blood diamonds, and, and, and it goes beyond diamonds. It's in the metals as well with slave labor uh, and, and people dying in mines. And it's just there's not necessarily – the um, most ethical things happening in the world of tech. But this, to me, is almost egregious for a company founded in Japan, a company deeply seated in Japan, a company whose president of the entire company still technically resides in Japan, despite the headquarters now being in the United States. I find this to be wholly interesting that that 
basically Japan is not a priority for Sony anymore. I mean, if you look at the actual sales, okay, so I talked about how the Wii U sold over 700,000 during the same lifespan. Well, the PlayStation 5 is at 255,000 units lifetime to date over the first seven weeks on the market. That is, I mean, not even half of what the Wii U was doing in Japan. A system that bombed in Japan. Bombed in Japan. And it's just... I'm not saying the PlayStation 5 isn't going to outsell the Wii U, you know, long haul. I don't... I, the Wii U did not sell well. So... I presume the PlayStation 5 will outsell the Wii U in Japan long haul. Obviously, PlayStation 5 has probably already outsold the Wii U lifetime to date worldwide, but this is... I mean, you, as you see with Nintendo, it's not like Japan's a small market. This is the highest sales day, or sales week, I guess, of the year. And Nintendo sold 278,000. They might have sold over a million units in Japan just this month. This is not a tiny market. This is not some dinky, ignore it, people aren't going to buy things market. Japan is a massive video game market. Massive. And right now, Nintendo's the only thing that sells there. Oh yeah, we have we have 13,000 13, PlayStation 5s. Congratulations, you almost lost out to the PlayStation 4. And ha, the Nintendo Switch? I mean, the Nintendo Switch is basically wiping its butt with your sales. And, and I get that this is, like, the highest sale, but, like, last week was not the highest week, and Nintendo Switch did 263,000. In fact, Nintendo doing over 150,000 units with the Switch is just a normal weekly occurrence. Like, they'll have weeks where they dip down to, like, 60, 70, 80,000. Those are bad weeks for Switch. 60, 70, 80,000 is a bad week for Switch. PlayStation 5 is a 13. This is... I, I, I don't... I don't know what Sony's doing. Uh, Sony has made quite a number of baffling decisions, uh, you know, heading into PlayStation 5's launch and post-launch. Um, they still do some things right. The games are obviously still really, really good. Miles Morales, really, really good. That Demon Souls Remastered, really, really good. Like, they still do, like, and make and provide really great content. And that content is largely why a lot of people buy into Sony's platforms. The DualSense controller, for all intents and purposes, is a very, very nice controller, although some people are having some issues with the triggers. I kind of foresaw some of the trigger issues happening where basically the, uh, the those adaptive triggers break. If you actually look at the mechanism, uh, they're using a plastic coil, and it's plastic does just not have long-term rigidity, so the more times you, you use it and you get that force feedback, the, the higher likelihood that that plastic's going to bend, it's going to crack, it's going to break, and that seems to be what's happening. Some, some, some issues are happening with the spring that's in there as well, so I, I, I always thought that it was a really cool idea that, about those triggers, but how it's engineered, I'm not sure, is really made to last, but still, the DualSense controller overall is really, really cool, and to talk more positive, hey, that PlayStation 5 UI, I mean, it's nice. The, some of the UI features, the help, uh, the little help videos, all like, great. There's some really cool stuff going on there, uh, but not everything is always so great in the world of Sony. And there's some stuff behind the scenes. There's some stuff that's front-facing that isn't good. Uh, and the same is true for Nintendo. It's just Nintendo stuff is more blatant because uh, you can literally just load up the Switch and instantly be like, oh, hey, I have Joy-Con Drift. <laughs> or, oh, hey, I still can't theme. Oh, hey, there's no music or anything to like let you know you'll, you even turn the system on. Oh, hey, uh, you know, it's a little hard to navigate that eShop. Oh, hey, I still can't organize my games perfectly the way I want to, let alone put them into folders. Oh, hey, this. Oh, hey, that. Oh, hey, now that it's been, you know, a few years, the UI isn't really feeling as snappy as it once did now that we have next-gen systems out with full SSDs. Oh, man, like there's just, you know, some some games just running like crap. You know, you, you, you load up Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, and it's a great experience, and I had a lot of fun with it, but it's undeniable that it's one of the worst, you know, in terms of performance, in ter you know, in terms of FPS and, and resolution on the platform, and while Musou Games always had this issue, it's not exclusive to Musou Games, we have already seen a number of games uh, struggling to run well on Switch, so the issues with Switch are more apparent, and this is before you get into online, before you realize you can't do local voice chat, or even texting other people you can't like message someone 
at all. It just doesn't exist. Uh, Nintendo had a great idea at one point, a Miiverse that could have been expanded. Then they got rid of it. They could have just renamed it or something so it didn't have to be revolved around Miis. But I, Nintendo has these great ideas, and they seem to just throw them away. They got rid of friend codes, finally acting like the rest of the world, only to bring them back. I, I honestly don't know what Nintendo is doing. And a lot of these things are so easy to be critical of. Sony has less and less flubs like that to be critical of. The flubs for Sony are usually of a bigger variety. Things like, oh, we're going to have, uh, you know, we're going to mess around with that backwards compatibility. We're going to have it, then we're not going to have it. We're going to have it, then we're not going to have it. They ended up including it, but really confusing messaging on that. Oh, and what about like game upgrades? Oh, if you buy a PlayStation 4 version, do you get the free upgrades to the next gen version? No, you have to spend 70 plus dollars to, to get the, the remaster version of Spider-Man. Now they're trying to backtrack on that as well. Like, it's weird. There's weird things going on. Uh, Microsoft isn't free from all this as well. Microsoft has obviously had lots of strange things happening. But, I mean, really, the big thing that's how Microsoft is Game Pass is really, really cool. And xCloud, in its beta, alpha, whatever it is on Android, uh, works really, really well. So xCloud works really, really well. Game Pass is great. Maybe the greatest value in gaming. Uh, and then, obviously, you know they have their interesting strategy with the Xbox Series S, which now has become like the greatest emulation machine on the planet. I mean, it's not. Technically, the X would be a better emulation machine. But, I mean, the S is so much cheaper, like 300 bucks to basically have a machine that can emulate things all the way up through like PlayStation 2. That's insane. Like, that's really cheap. And Microsoft doesn't stop it. They actually kind of promote it. You just spend 20 bucks on a dev tool, uh, and then you basically, within like a half hour, can be up and running uh, playing a bunch of emulated games, and Microsoft doesn't care because, hey, use our system like a PC. What do we care? It's your system. Do what you want. It's kind of refreshing. There's also downfalls to them. Uh, they, they've been really lacking in games. Some people are not happy that they bought Bethesda because Bethesda was making games for everything, and now they only make games likely for Microsoft. You know, you had Phil Spencer recently come out and say, yeah, Bethesda's important to the future of Xbox. Well, I mean, that definitely sounds like you're going to make games exclusive because wouldn't it just be important to the future of gaming otherwise? So, yeah, I well, we're in interesting times. I don't know what's going to happen here in 2021. I just know that we, you, crushed PlayStation 5's launch. And it's not even close in Japan. Switch, you're doing good. Switch is still owning like 29 of the top 30 software sales. Uh, top 5 uh, software, for those wondering, you know, you have Momotoro uh, Dentetsu at number one. You have Animal Crossing New Horizons at number two. Ring Fit Adventure at number three. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at number four. Super Smash Bros. at number five. You kind of get the drift. Nintendo and games released on Nintendo's platform dominate, dominated Japan. So, all right, folks, enter that giveaway. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.